Thank you. Uh, one of the things I think is most interesting is that everything around us, every last bit of the stuff that's around us started as an idea. And the interesting part about new ideas is that they either evolve or they die. And if we're careful about how we evolve our ideas, they can blossom into useful, impactful designs that make a big difference in the world. I've had the good fortune in the last three years to participate in eight year-long engineering projects for the developing world. Seven of those were implemented to varying degrees of success on two foreign continents around the world. We had 28 engineering students involved, and 24 of them were able to travel with us to see the, the resulting design implemented in the setting that it was designed for. So let me now describe one of uh, our recent projects, and we'll see how these concepts of being people-centered, interdisciplinary, and iterative made a difference in, in the success. So about a year and a half ago, wholives.org approached us about designing a machine, a human-powered machine that could drill holes into the earth six inches in diameter, 100 to 200 feet down, to reach fresh drinking water in Africa. Well, under their sponsorship and with eight months of work, we designed this machine. We went to Africa, Tanzania. We had a number of successful digs. And I'm happy to say that uh, this particular picture here, now, now at this site, there's a working pump. And that pump's uh, providing clean water, access to clean water, to a number of people in Magugu, Tanzania. So the engineering team worked through a number of challenging issues to get to this point. How do you cut the earth? How do you remove the cuttings? How do you spin the bit by human power alone? How do you add drill pipe sections as the bit gets deeper and deeper into the earth? And how do you support thousands of pounds of drill pipe when you need to retract it back out? Well, we worked through those problems. And we had successful digs here in America. And we felt like it was time for a field study. So we packed up the machine, sent it to Tanzania. We followed closely behind. And when our aircraft was landing, about to land in, in Tanzania, a shocking truth came to me and to others on our team. And that was that after eight months of work on this machine, all we really knew how to do was put holes in the earth. And you know what? The grand challenge is not to put holes in the earth. It's to provide access to clean water. And it turns out that to provide access to clean water, you have to first know where to put the hole. And then you have to put a hole in the earth. And then once you put the hole in the earth, you have to, you have to case it to, so it doesn't cave in. And, you, and this casing also allows you to separate the rocks from the mud and the water. And then once you have that casing, you've got to have some kind of pump. And all of that needs to be maintained over time. And so the shocking reality for us was that our engineering work was only a small portion of what was needed to make a difference. And under the inspired leadership of John Renard at wholives.org, he somehow very quickly, and I don't know how he did this, expanded our team. He expanded it to the point that we had hydrologists. These are the people who tell us where we're going to find the water under the earth. We had the engineering team. We had uh, the well casing team. We had the, the pump experts. But this was not all. John also managed to get venture capitalists involved and on site with us right there, business strategists, local politicians, local manufacturers, exercise scientists. This was a truly interdisciplinary team. And I can completely say that the success of this project was not because of our engineering, however good it might have been. It was actually because of the power that came from that interdisciplinary team. And in its most embryonic state, this human-powered drill looked like this. It was a pipe with a bit, two guys walking around in a circle. But we knew that it would evolve, like all good ideas do. So the team planned for that. And the team used the process of iteration to take the idea to a point that would become useful. You can see the evolution of the, the design as we're going through this. And I just want to actually pause on this last to show you that 
These are the local manufacturers who are now producing this device. And I'm actually quite excited to say that in the first few months of this year alone, they've already produced eight of these drills. I like the idea that villagers can get involved and that may not just produce water, it may take them further that they realize there is some future for them. At the end of our trip it was exciting. We were drilling in a farm of sandy soil and 70 feet down when we unhooked the pipes there was a small geyser and that was evidence to us that we were successful.